Hi, my name is Solomon Parker. I don't have a fancy nickname like the Fat Bee Man, but if you want to know about treatment-free beekeeping, I'm the guy you want to talk to. Today, I'm working on melting wax from old frames. You can see behind me right here, uh, some frames that I picked out over the past couple of weeks. Bit stuck together. You look at this, it's a lot of drone comb. The comb is old. This is supposed to be small cell wax comb and you can see it's not anything close to small cell. And it's all sort of nasty. So I've got a combination between that, some broken frames, some really old black comb frames that I'm going to be melting down today. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Here's today's tool of the trade. It's your basic turkey deep fryer burner hooked to a 20 gallon propane cylinder. And sitting on top of the burner is a nifty thing that I picked up at a commercial cooking store. It was a custom made stainless steel box for nobody knows what purpose, but at any rate, the guy who ordered it never picked it up or paid for it and so they gave it to me for a pretty decent price it's actually pretty interesting I'll show you here in a second it happened to be the perfect size to fit a frame in so it just so happened that frames fit in right there even though it doesn't serve any purpose except for to store frames when it's not being used it'll store about 15 it's not that big a deal anyway so that box is filled about two-thirds full of water right now we're going to heat up the water to about 150 degrees you want it just warm enough to melt the wax but not warm enough to burn the wax and since the box isn't really deep enough and it doesn't really make sense to try and melt the whole frame at once what i basically do is stick one frame in at a time, halfway or a little more than halfway on on one end and then turn it around and swish it around on the other end and when the water's the right temperature it melts the wax within a few seconds and then I can scoop out the slum gum and I'll melt that down to render the wax out of it and I can also separate some fairly clean wax, which will be remelted later to, to purify it better. And then the final step will be to melt all that wax down once it's nice and clean and fresh in a little thing on my kitchen stove and pour it into one pound molds. And the air conditioning just kicked on, so I'm going to go ahead and get some stuff done and stop recording for a while. Alright, now we're starting to get warmed up pretty good. Can't really see the thermometer there, but we're at about, I don't know, 135, nearly 140 degrees. I've got a ball of wax floating in here to tell me when the water will be ready. You can see the ball of wax is starting to look a little hazy. That look that wax gets when it's about to melt. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit of steam coming off the surface here. So we are almost ready to go. Alright, you can see here I've just started working on the first frame. The water's hot enough, plus the wax will help to keep the water from evaporating, which will make the water hotter. So that'll be good too. So you can see as I've started working through the frame, stuff comes off pretty easily just kind of dip it in there swish it around now when I am getting ready to re-foundation these frames it will take a little work I'll have to take off the uh, wedge which holds the foundation in clean that out pretty good you can see here 
the wax turning white as it melts. So let's start the other side so you can see what it looks like when it goes through. The light colored wax melts first because it's softer. It doesn't have the cocoons in it. So the white, <clears throat> white stuff comes off pretty quick. And it would come off quicker if the water were warmer, but not quite as warm as I'd like it, but it's getting there. So as it's warming up still, I can do the light colored frames. You can see floating around in here, the cocoons. Um, they don't separate from the wax really easily. But I can scoop them out as it gets full. Stubborn stuff hanging out of the bottom here. There we go. I don't really care too much about the bottom of the frame. I don't use that slot down there, that groove. Your typical grooved bottom. Because I cut off the foundation a little above that to allow the bees some space to make drones. So if we can see an example. So this is an example where they've filled in some of the bottom, but not all. But they filled it in with worker brood. They fill it in with whatever they want. Sometimes they don't fill it in. Such is life. I don't mind. Let's get another example. Full dark frame. Start at the beginning. You can see a lot of drone comb. Comb's not drawn very well. This frame may be... Could be even 10 years old. Who knows? Probably not though, because it's not dark enough. So we get the, get the water into the cells. Initially the comb wants to float. Because there's air in the cells. But then once we get that hot water in the cells, we get that surface area exposed to the hot water. It starts wanting to melt. Of course I get this all set up. It's an hour's hours long process to get this all working and it starts to rain. Such is life. But it's not cold so I don't mind. Another thing I can do with this frame since this is not this is a wedge top frame without a wedge I get in here and clean out that really easily so that when it comes to Getting that frame ready with foundation in the future, it's ready to go. Here's an example of something we can do. This is an old nasty frame. I can get my... Oh, that's not a good example. That's an old frame back when I was leaving the... when I was leaving the wedge top in there from the factory and pouring wax down in the groove and doing it that way. So here's a good one. Get in right next to the nail. And I forgot to press the safety button on my burner. So my burner has gone out. So after this frame, I have to get in there and turn it back on. There we go, and I can just, it's hard to do this and show you, clean this wax off, and then reuse my wedge next time. One thing I should mention before you go and try and set up your own system this way. The propane burner idea is slow and expensive and I find a much better method is to use wood heat underneath 
underneath my box here. I have in the past found wood heat to be much nicer because, first of all, wood is much cheaper to get a hold of. I could do it with just, you know, trimmings from my trees around the yard here. Propane costs money. <clears throat> and this burner is not terribly powerful, and so it's taken several hours to get this up to temperature. And it is still not even quite up to temperature. And burner's on full power, and I'm not even sure we're maintaining temperature, so it's not the best, not the best way to do it. But I don't really have a spot to build a fire at this house. Maybe I need a, a little fire pit or something. At my last place in Arkansas, I just did it in the backyard. Because I had a backyard. Here in Denver, in the city, there's not as much space. There are a lot of people. There we go. Another frame finished. And here in a moment, I will show you how I get the gunk out of the water. So this is a big industrial cook size strainer. So when I get too much stuff in the thing here, see it's not staying melted because the burner is not powerful enough. Anyway, I can grab it out, sift some uh, the water and some wax fall out, and then just stick it in my bucket down here. And later on, at some point in the future, I will fish all that out of there and heat it up in oh, one or two pound chunks in a solar oven sun oven that someone gave me it's also a good idea to put some water in the bucket because then your swim gum doesn't all stick to the bottom Another thing you want to make sure of is when you've collected all your gunk and wax and cocoons and everything before you move to the next processing stage, make sure you let it dry out. If it doesn't get to properly dry out, it will rot, essentially, and smell nasty, and you don't want that. I mean, it's not going to ruin anything necessarily, but it's, it's not going to make it very enjoyable to work with. Again, if we were fully up to temperature, this would go significantly faster but we're using a propane burner rather than wood and a trainer so here's what I use in my solar oven this is your standard vegetable steamer. I put about a cup of water in the bottom of here. Put this in here. Put a big chunk of wax, or, or actually, first I put a coffee filter in it. Coffee filter right in the bottom there. There's also a piece of window screen. That's to keep the larger gunk from getting through. Put a coffee filter in there. Fill up, you know, with a bunch of either comb or slum gum or wax chunks or whatever I'm working with put that in the Sun oven when I go to work in the morning 
come back in the afternoon. I have it aimed so that it, you know, it's not cooking all day. It's just cooking in the late afternoon for when I get ready to come home. Come home, this will be all melted. I'll pour it into another container and let that harden. And then the next day, or whenever I do my final wax processing, I can take that mold that I've made in a, I don't know, a Tupperware container or whatever, scrape off the gunk from the bottom, maybe a bee or something land on the top of it anyway, and I can get virtually pure wax at that point, totally no need for filtering except for the coffee filter, and then when I go to melt it down to mold it, it's all right there, and I don't have to worry too much about a bunch of gunk in the wax. So your standard vegetable steamer.